The Amazon rainforest is our Earth's largest remaining rainforest. Scientists tell us that just the existence of these trees is crucial to our planet's ability to withstand rising global temperatures. Crucial to our planet's water cycle with its production of rain, cloud vapor, and 20% of the Earth's fresh water. And critical to stabilizing the levels of carbon and oxygen in our atmosphere. The rainforest has become a global symbol for species and habitat protection. No one questions that every year more trees are being cut and burned and more rivers are being mined and dammed. The question is, when will be the tipping point for the ecology? Economics is driving deforestation and mining. And with 25 million people living in Amazonia, even conservationists will agree that some form of industry is necessary. But are there industries that can extract resources in ways that are sustainable? The trade in wild-caught tropical fish has been a source of revenue for river communities for almost 60 years. One example among several of traditional rainforest industries in the Amazon region. But even though there's a strong demand in the international aquarium market for these unique species, the fishery has been in a state of near collapse for over 10 years. And now animal rights activists are working to ban the wild caught aquarium fish trade throughout the world. What would be the impact in Amazonia? Is this trade harmful to aquatic habitats and species? Or does the aquarium trade benefit conservation efforts in the Amazon region? Let's investigate. Why is the Amazon jungle so important? Well, it is essential for the well-being of the planet. Being the largest contiguous forest in the world, it supplies 20% of the oxygen. In addition to that, it is the largest contiguous river system in the world, accounting for 20% of the fresh water flowing in the world. It contains 33% of all of the plant and animal species. A third of the world's species actually live and belong in the Amazon jungle. The forest that we know today has been through many glaciations and it has been essentially either wiped out or left very thin and it has recovered. The problem is not necessarily with the disturbance. Blowdowns occur in the Amazon which can destroy hundreds of square kilometres at a time but the forest recovers because you don't have people going in there afterwards setting fires cutting down the remaining trees and planting crops. There is a very strong link between activities of humans and any sort of disturbance that will happen. Humans are now invading most of the Amazon and every chance they get to cut and burn, they will. If we have enough of the Amazon protected from cutting and burning, it's very likely that we'll be able to sustain the water cycle. An old mature tree in the Amazon jungle through its lifetime produces 25 million gallons of water back up into the atmosphere. That cycle of rain, and assume that there is approximately 400 million trees at 25 million gallons each, stabilizes the moisture in the entire atmosphere. Satellite research has been monitoring the rate of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. It's estimated that in the last 50 years, about one-fifth or 300,000 square miles of forest has been cleared. In 2019, forest fires in Amazonia attracted global attention and controversy. The Brazilian Space Agency, which monitors deforestation, estimated that forest fires increased by 80% over the previous year. Each year, farmers regularly burn on their properties to prepare the land for new planting. These fires can rage out of control and burn large areas of forest. Opportunistic farmers can then move in to illegally cultivate and expand their soy plantations and cattle ranches. 
Beef and soy are Brazil's largest exports, and international investment and demand is helping to drive production. The rainforest and the trees and the plant life in the Amazon is being called the lungs of the world, given that it provides 20% of the oxygen. In a similar parody, look at the river system of the Amazon jungle. We can pretty much refer to it as the veins of the earth. It's a circulatory system without which there would be no life. To the extent that we compromise the flowing of those rivers and the water availability of those rivers, it's equivalent to putting ourselves at a risk of a stroke. Unfortunately, we're constantly doing that with dams, with mining, with deforestation. The forecast is that legal and illegal deforestation will increase in the coming years. Brazil is suffering a prolonged economic crisis. In search of desperately needed revenue, the Brazilian government supports permitting new agriculture and mining initiatives in protected reserves within the forest. These plans are controversial and have become the focus of debate and criticism from politicians and conservationists internationally. The Brazilian government considers this criticism disrespectful to their sovereignty. They resist the notion that Amazonia belongs to the planet. The government insists that many of the nations that are critical to the opening of Amazonia to agriculture and mining have already deforested their lands and are therefore hypocrites. But what may be overlooked here is there are traditional industries that do not result in the destruction of the rainforest. Industries which can harvest sustainably without depleting the very resources that are being monetized or negatively impact the forest and aquatic habitats. The principal extractive industries in the Amazon are the acai palm and the Brazil nut. Uh, other industries such as fruits or the uh, ornamental fish produce a much smaller amount of overall money for the economy, but they are the most important sources of income for most of the people in the Amazon outside the city of Manaus. A gente tem alguns ambientes principais na Amazônia. A gente tem a grande calha do rio Solimões Amazonas, um grande rio de planície com águas barrentas e mais ou menos lentas, que tem um tipo de fauna de peixes. A gente tem os grandes maciços montanhosos, os escudos do Brasil Central e das Guianas, são rios de águas claras com cachoeiras que tem outros tipos de peixes. Né? E temos a grande bacia do Rio Negro, que também é de planície, mas de águas pretas, muito ácidas, que restringem a entrada de outras espécies de peixes que não estão adaptados a essas condições. The source of the Rio Negro is the Colombian Amazon, and as it flows southeast, it forms the border with Venezuela before entering Brazil and the lowland basin of the state of Amazonas. The journey ends where the Rio Negro meets the Solomões. This is the confluence of the mighty Amazon River, known as the meeting of the waters. Manaus, the state capital of Amazonas, sits on the last stretches of the northern bank of the Rio Negro. É, o Rio Negro é uma das bacias melhor preservadas da Amazônia e certamente do planeta. Né? É uma bacia que não tem uma vocação importante para a agricultura por causa da grande área inundada que ela tem sazonalmente. E a floresta é muito bem preservada por esse motivo. O Rio Negro, todos os afluentes do Rio Negro nascem na própria floresta. Então todos os ácidos úmicos do chão, da floresta, das folhas, das árvores, carreiam para a água e tingem a água nessa cor característica do Rio Negro. E essa água, que é bastante ácida por esse motivo, tem a sua fauna particular de peixe, né? uma fauna endêmica do Rio Negro, bastante diferente de outras áreas. É, o Rio Negro tem uma, uma característica muito especial, que é uma riqueza de espécies muito elevada. Então, a gente tem uma diversidade enorme de peixes num ambiente que supostamente é pobre em nutrientes, em alimento para os peixes. Então, a gente tem muitas espécies mas não muitos indivíduos de cada espécie, o que faz com que em qualquer local a gente tenha um conjunto de espécies muito distintas. Né? Além disso, a água é transparente, apesar de ser preta, né? como um chá. Então, o aspecto visual é muito importante, os peixes se reconhecem visualmente. Então, as características de cor e de forma 
Essas espécies são importantes para o reconhecimento entre si, para a reprodução e para a evolução. Então, do ponto de vista aquarista, né, você tem muitas espécies, uma variedade enorme, com formas e cores muito diferentes. Acho que isso torna a fauna de peixes do Rio Negro muito especial. 